The Pet Clinic on today, sponsored by PetFixClub.com. Love your pet? Join the club. I always want to start dancing when I hear that tune. Anyway, when it comes to our four-legged friends, age is always a factor which we need to take into consideration when it comes to their care. Pete the Vet is with us. Pete, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Today we're chatting about arthritis. Arthritis, which is such a common problem mm -hmm. of older dogs, mm -hmm. and especially large breed older dogs. Like Kiko's a little dog. She's not so bothered by arthritis at all, even though she's 11 years of age yeah. now. So she but may have bits of it? She may have a little bit of arthritis, mm -hmm. and as she gets older, 13, 14, 15, it will become more likely. But really big breeds, Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, mm -hmm. German Shepherds, these kind of dogs, I would say nearly all of them suffer from arthritis once they get past the age of 10. And is it worse, Pete, because they are bigger, heavier dogs and it's, uh, I suppose there is more weight on the joints then? That's the first thing, but also it's their conformation. It's the way they've been bred. Okay. All pedigree dogs, to some extent, are inbred. And so they, uh, most pedigree breeds have got some specific conditions that they get that cause problems. And for those dogs, it's because of the shape of their joints, they're a bit more prone to arthritis. Okay. And uh, how, how can we tell that our four-legged friends here would have arthritis? Well, um, I suppose arthritis causes stiffness and it causes pain. And what you, when you notice it particularly is when a dog's been resting for a while and the, the, the fluid gathers in the joints. So when they stand up, the joints are a bit full of fluid and particularly uncomfortable. So kind you of look, like ourselves, Pete. Kind of like ourselves, I suppose. So when your dog gets up in the morning, you see them kind of taking a while to get out of the bed and they'll be groaning a bit. And when they go for walks, they'll be slow to move and they'll be, often they'll be limping, limping on one particular leg if that's mm -hmm. particularly painful. Okay, yeah. you should probably go to the vet at that stage just to check, should you? It's definitely worth having a specific diagnosis made for sure. But there are some general things that you can do and that's mostly what I'm talking about. Okay today. and what, what can we do? Well the first and most important thing is very simple and that's make sure that your dog is the right body weight. Mm -hmm. So um, your dog should be lean, they shouldn't be carrying too much weight and we know that something like two-thirds of dogs are actually overweight or obese mm -hmm. and extra weight in the joints puts extra pressure on the joints which makes them more painful and does more damage to them. So what you should do is get your dog onto the right type of diet and that means a senior type diet mm -hmm. for an older dog okay. and you should make sure you give them the right amount of that diet. So, for example, with Kiko, I weigh out how much food she could get. She gets. She gets 120 grams a day. Mm -hmm. That's a total daily allowance. So I weigh that, and then that's all she gets. Is that from, once a day? Then she gets. Please. She gets two small meals a okay. day. So is that halved? That's you so have. that's put in half. Okay. It's not very much food, you mm -hmm. might say. But I know that it's all she need. And if you give your dog too much food, they put on weight, and you say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna have to give them less, and you, you adjust it accordingly to make, get them the right weight. What, what, can the dog get into a bad mood when you're starting this process, Pete? <laughs> I don't, no, I think dogs, dogs live in the moment. So There's a special treat for Kiko. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kiko, just... <laughs> Kiko just got an early dinner. <laughs> Uh, dogs live in the moment as she's living in that moment and uh, they take what they get and yeah. Kiko doesn't get into bad form because she doesn't get enough food, no. Okay, but even not, not even the first day or two when, when I suppose when the dog has to learn that they're not going to get as much food as they did maybe the week before. I, I, th I think you have to sort of step back from it and just be disciplined. A lot of people fuss too much over their dogs when they're feeding them and they worry too much about it. Basically, the deal is a deal, mm -hmm. that's it. You have to have a boundary there. Of course, uh, just like ourselves, uh, food is one part, but exercise mm -hmm. is another big part mm -hmm. of this, Pete. Exercise is a really big part, and um, the interesting thing with arthritis is you want to give them some exercise mm -hmm. so they're keeping mobility going, but you don't want to give them too much. Now, what that means generally is if when you have a young adult dog, you're taking them for like for a two or three hour walk, you can't do that with an elderly dog mm -hmm. with arthritis. You'd be much better to give them like 30 to 45 minutes twice a day rather than one long hour and a half. Yeah, because that, it could probably hurt them. It hurts they, them if they yeah. too much and people know themselves, your dog will start to slow down and in the middle of the walk they'll just stop completely and not want to go on. So listen to your dog as far as that's concerned. So some exercise uh, but not too much. Okay and what about medication then Peter? And this is crucial. A lot of people don't realise this but um, older dogs that are slowing up, if they get non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs mm -hmm. from their vet Prescription only ones, you can't use the human ones, that's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Special ones designed for dogs from your vet will transform an older dog's life and it will make them seem like a young dog oh. again. It's will it, will it take away the pain? It takes away the pain and it takes away the swelling of the joints. That's the number one treatment. But as well as that, some dogs, steroids help them. Other dogs, there are special cartilage modifying drugs that are given by injection. And in other cases, there's a brand new drug called an, uh, um, a monoclonal antibody mm -hmm. against the, 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 um, the drugs, the, the chemicals involved in pain production. Mm -hmm. 
And that's a very new one. It's just an injection that's given once a month. Okay, and it's really it. effective yeah. and very few side effects. So that's, that's a great advance. Things are changing all the time. Of course, we should be, we should be reading up on the mall temp. Pete, mm. what's inside that white jar over there as well? So the other thing you can do yourself is you can yeah. give supplements, mm -hmm. um, in particular essential fatty acid supplements. Um, these ones are, are basically designed to give one a day. And that mm -hmm. contains the kind of oils that um, they help improve the quality of the joints, oh, but they also have, a, have an anti-inflammatory effect as well. So that's a simple over-the-counter product that you can buy. Mm -hmm. And you can buy the, the dedicated little, um, little treats or capsules like this, or you can buy a, a simpler uh, version, a cost-effective version would be to buy a mm -hmm. bottle of the mackerel oil. And okay. mackerel oil contains fish what oils. you need. Yeah, the perfect. right type of fish oils. So you just give a squirt every day into your pet's food. Pete, so those Ke are other alternatives. Ke Kiko is wearing a very special brace today. Tell us well, about this. I think this is really important. So if you do have an older dog that's slow, so, so slow and creaky they can't get around anymore, the hold em up harnesses are designed for such dogs. And what you do, you see, is you, once you have the harness on them, you can actually grasp them here and here, mm -hmm. and you can help them around. So if your dog has difficulty, for mm -hmm. example, getting into your car, you can get a ramp for them to get in the car, but you can also use a harness like this, so you can actually lift them like this. And that won't hurt the dog at all? No, it's designed, you see, to have yeah. straps here and here and here, so it's all comfortable, and it's oh. all padded, and so a hold them up harness will actually <laughs> mean that your dog can be held up by you and be yeah. kept really comfortable, and, and Kiko doesn't need it, um, but there's lots of dogs that have be been massively benefited from it. Brilliant. Pete, just before you go, how mm. can people contact you if they have questions? I'm always happy to answer questions. They just need to go to petfixclub.com, sign on there, and I'll get back to them straight away. Perfect. Lovely, Pete. Thank you very much for being with us. Of course, you'll be back again next week, and you'll be chatting about uh, habits and aggressive behaviour. Indeed. That's a v big topic. Very, very interesting one, that. L. The Pet Clinic. On today. Sponsored by petfixclub.com. Love your pet? Join the club.